Okay, so Perik Dalit of Sefer Shemuel. So you have it on your screens in front of you. So remember last time where we left off. We said this story is going to begin our development of getting rid of the old in order to bring in the new. Getting rid of the leadership of Eili in order to bring in the leadership of Shemuel. And we'll point out uh, through this Perik something important that's going to happen because of the fact that we're going from a Kohen to a Navi, which I think is going to be very significant. Okay. So we saw in Pasuk Aleph, we actually saw this last time. So we said, don't read it the way I just read it. It's not Shemuel telling Am Yisrael to go to the Pilishtim to the war, but rather... But he Shemuel Chol Yisrael. That's our title. Paul is right there. This is the fulfillment of the words of Shemuel to all of Am Yisrael. And how is it going to happen? Okay, we're going to see. So it's out. By the way, but it's Yisrael is our first thing. Kapulishtim la Muhammad v'yahanu al even ha'izid ufulishtim hanu be'afik. Okay, so we have a battlefield. We have a battlefield ready. Um, if anyone ever takes these uh, these uh, trips, and the, the screen share is not on. No, the screen share is on. We should be we should be good. If anyone ever takes these trips to Israel, you can kind of get the sense of the milhama. Watch what's happening here in this map. So I hope the screen share is working because it's actually a nice map. It gives us it gives us the understanding of what's happening. We have the Pilishtim, who we're familiar with for a long time from the stories of Abraham Avinu. What the Pilishtim are doing, and, and it's important to see what, what's happening during the time, end of the Shoftim period, into the time of Shemuel, throughout the book of Shemuel, the Pilishtim are the major enemy of Am Yisrael, as opposed to the beginning of Sefer Shoftim, where most of their enemies are Amon, Moab, Aram, Kushan, Mishatayim, of Aran, Naharayim, Midian is involved in with the story. On, right, most of the enemies of foreign countries invading, Israel is so weak at this point in time that it can't keep control over its own country. So what's happening is these Pilishtim on the coast are slowly, who come probably from these Greek islands, the Torah tells us. So they come for they come from the Greek Isles. They come into the coast, and we have the famous Pilishtim cities on the coast. Gaza, Ashkelon, Ashdod. Right? These are the famous Pilishtim cities. The other two big cities are Ekron, right where I'm rolling my mouse. I'm not sure if you can see it. Ekron, which is more inwards, and Gat, also more inwards. So they're coming from the south, they're coming from the west, and they're slowly encroaching onto Am Yisrael, right? So if you see our Milhama is right here, kind of on the border. Afik, Ibn Ha'izid, which is going to be where the, the place of the wars. And just so you get the sense of the map, here, literally, this is really the heart of Israel. Right, it, it, it leaves out most of the north. You have Yehuda who suffers tremendously from the Pilishtim, and Ephraim who, and, and Menashe who are fighting them as well. Okay, so that's the basic idea. We saw them in the book of Shoftim, not us together, but Am Yisrael in the book of Shoftim during the time of Shimshon. So they're definitely very, for Am Yisrael's sake, they're definitely very powerful, and they only have one way to go. They can only capture, if they want to expand, they have to expand into Israel. Keep in mind, Egypt, Gaza, right here is the border today with Egypt. They're not going and capturing the Egyptian empire. So that's this is where they are. They're going to be a thorn in the side of Am Yisrael, but at this, uh, throughout, you know, history, but at this point in time, they're not just a thorn, they're, they're, they're existential threat to Am Yisrael, right? I hope I'm conveying that idea properly, right? But uh, the Pilishtim are really threatening Am Yisrael 
and they could really cause them serious damage. And therefore, Am Yisrael, when they're dealing with the Pilashim, they're going to be very nervous. So now let's get rid of our very nice map, right? Hopefully, I, I think that helps, you know, show you a little bit. And let's get back to our text, right? But they, they, today, they go on these tours and they go, they take it to these places. Is it exact place? I don't know, but that's where they take us to. Okay. Where is Shiloh? So Shiloh is, oh, yeah. So go back to the map here. If you could see, Shiloh is right here. So if the Pilishtim win the war, they could really go a direct line and keep in mind that it's is not so wide and they just walk into Shiloh. We'll, we'll come back to this idea. It's good you mentioned it, Sammy, because we'll see what happens. We'll, we will see, we'll kind of see what happens to Shiloh. Okay. So, Four thousand people die on the first day of the battle. So battle number one or day number one of the battle, the Jewish people die, but it seems to be they maintain their positions. They or they have to retreat a little, but at the end of the day, they're still ready to go to war. The army is still intact. So they come and they regroup and they take stock. Uh, take stock of themselves and they ask they ask a very Jewish question this is a beautiful Jewish question why did Hashem punish us Nagaf defeat us in front of the Pilishtim cause us to be defeated in front of the Pilishtim wonderful Jewish question we're recognizing that we lost, not because of strength of our enemy. We're recognizing that there's a religious aspect involved. Oh, these are good Jews. These are good Jews. But look at the answer. Fascinating. What's the answer? Aaron is not here. Let's go take the Aaron from Shiloh. It will come in our midst and it will save us. <laughs> well, I, I'm cheating here, but I'm reading it on purpose this way, right? It almost sounds like it will come. Yavo, what, what will come? The Aaron in our midst. And the Yoshirainu, it will save us. What? The Aaron, Mikaf Weaving. Obviously, that's not what the that's not what how the way you're going to translate the pasuk. You're going to read it like this: the Aaron brit Hashem will come in our midst, and then Hashem will bring the Aaron. Then Hashem, Yavu Bikabinu Hashem, whose presence is upon the Aaron, and then Hashem will save us from our enemies, right? Because they realize Hashem caused them to be defeated. Hashem caused them to win the war. But why? Why am I reading it that way? Because Rabbi, is, yeah, Rabbi, excuse me. Yeah. Don't we have to understand the opening phrase as implying that Shemuel directed them to go to war? No, no. So we, we already said, we already said, we brought the commentary of Rashid that it doesn't seem to be that way. There are other commentaries that do agree to what you're saying. But again, it's odd because then you would expect the fallout from Shemuel. A, he's not involved here. Where is he? Where is he in Pasuk Gimel? Why but then what's the point? The then what's the point of that insertion? What do I need it for? What, so, what did so he tell that, them? No, because this is the this is the fulfillment of the Var Shemuel of how it's going to play out that Eli and Chofni and Finhas are going to die. His prophecy, the only one prophecy that we know he made, right? That this is how it's going to get fulfilled. We said it's an opening title. Okay. Okay. So now, so now, right, why am I saying it this way? That it almost sounds like they're talking about the Aaron as opposed to God. Obviously, they're talking about God, but it sounds like they're talking about the Aaron. Why? Because what are they saying? Hashem is angry at us, or Hashem is causing us to be defeated. So what do we need to do? We need to bring, we need to bring him. Oh, if he comes, we're automatically going to be okay. What, what are you talking about? This is not the Jewish answer to why you lose. We know what the Jewish answer to why we lose a war is. The Jewish answer is because 
We didn't do, we need to do teshuva, veshavta ad Adonai Elohecha, veshamata bekolo. We are worshiping Abu Dazara, we were an honest in business, right? Either the Ben Adam Lahavero or the Ben Adam Lamakom. Normally it's probably both, but wh- whichever one it is, wh- wh- how do we get to, oh, yeah, the Aron is not here. Okay, now, keep that in mind. We're going to see, I'm going to tell you why they said it. We'll get to it why they said it, and it'll be very tragic why they're saying this. But two, we have to ask the question, because Hazal asked the question, uh, what, what does this mean? So is this something new? Is it, Meaning, do you normally take that on to war and they forgot and they're like, oh, this is why we're losing because we didn't take that on to war, so let's get that on. Is this a hidush that they're doing that they're bringing that on to war? What's the standard? What's not the standard? According to Hazal, the standard is that uh, there were two Arons. This is Hazal's approach. One of the approaches uh, is not everybody agrees. It's Mahlokan and Hazal. But one of the approaches are the, the two Arons. What first Aron is the regular Aron was the Luhot. The second Aron has the Shivrei Luhot, the first set of Luhot that Moshe broke because of Heta Egel. So what they do with it? What they just left it there? It was written by God. It was. You're going to leave these things on the floor? No, oh, so they put it in Adon, and they would bring that when they went to war. This time, they're bringing the wrong Adon, they're bringing the real Adon to war, and that they're not supposed to do. So that's one approach of Hazal. I'm just going to say something. I'm not necessarily just going to disagree, but I'll just explain to you something that I think is very powerful. We have here already a paradigm shift from what we normally have in Sefer Shoftim. But it's what they normally do. I don't, maybe Yehoshua took the Shivrei Luchot to war. But you know who didn't? Anybody in Sefer Shoftim. Why not? Because they weren't fighting as Am Yisrael. You didn't have Am Yisrael going to war. You had tribe of Ephraim. Or normally it was a tribe of Menashe, and then the tribe of Ephraim got beat at them twice in Sefer Shoftim. Why didn't you ask us to come to war? You have, you have the tribe of, of, uh, Yehuda dealing with the Pilishtim pretty much on their own. And that's an interesting story with Shimshon, that Shimshon goes to Yehuda and Yehuda tells him, let us give you over to the Pilishtim. And Shimshon agrees because the Pilishtim and Yehuda are constantly fighting and going back in their own conflicts. You have in different wars, you have the different tribes going to war, but you never have, you never see this term, Israel. Which, by the way, so, so to Teddy's point, it could actually be maybe Shemuel got all of Amisel to go to war. Again, I don't think so because he's too absent from the story. But it's interesting. It could have been how much of an existential threat to Amisel that you had most of Amisel actually coming to war. So they bring the Aron. You don't have them bring the Aron because you don't have Amisel fighting. Yeah, I have Amisel fighting. Okay, so now we could ask them to bring the Aron. So this is, I think, a fascinating, you know, little twist on what was happening. You're asking what the norm, this this whole thing is not the norm because they never fought as Yisrael. And we have to really, I think, read it as that's how much of a threat it was to Am Yisrael that all of a sudden you have so many of them coming together to fight as one and we the tribes, the tribal division just disappears, which I think is fascinating because you're going to see even the Sefer Shemuel, even when we have kings, the tribes never fully disappear. So this is the first national war since the days of Yehoshua? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, which is why, right? It sounds wild. And we're talking about Shoftim period of about 400 years, potentially, right? Probably a little bit less. Shlomo builds the Beit HaMikdash. 480 years after they leave Egypt. So I don't know, somewhere between 300, 400 years. And this is the first time we're seeing Yisrael since Yehoshua, correct? Which is crazy. I, I mean, which does lend, by the way, and I will tell you, it makes sense. Maybe Al Shemuel really rallied them all together. But okay. Uh, it still bothers me. Where did he go with the story? That's why I prefer that she's the explanation. But okay, either way. Okay. So then they say, okay, bring the Arwa. So they go. We'll come back to that term in a second. 
Aim Aron Berita Hilohim Hofniu Pinahas. Right. So this is almost the second half of the Pasuk. It's like, yeah, you bring the Aron, but you're also bringing who? You bring these two Bnei Bilial, the Navi calls them, Hofniu Pinhas. I mean, the Aron is with Hofniu Pinhas. It doesn't work that way. God, you can't put God with Hofniu Pinhas. These are two. They're two contradictory elements, right? God is saying these are bozai, the people who, who uh, disgrace me. So uh, how you really bring God on the shoulders of hofnu finhas, right? By the way, by the way, you get that sense. Vayisu mishamet aron berit Hashem. Notice vayisu meaning they carry. They don't bring it on the wagon. They're carrying it, right? Which seems to be they're carrying it the way it's supposed to by the poles of the aron. Okay. So what, what, the first half of the Pasuk, notice the title. It's a great title. Aron Brit Hashem Sevaod, Yoshev HaKeruvim. God is called Yoshev HaKeruvim. This is what he does. He sits on the Keruvim. That's where his Shekhinah manifests from the Keruvim. So that, it's a very powerful Pasuk here that gives us the insight into why you would think, yeah, I bring the Aron, I bring God, because God goes wherever the Aron goes. Now, th- this is p- there's a pasuk explicit in the Torah to this idea. By he ben sawaha Aron, by Yomen Moshe, what does he say? He doesn't say Kuma Aron, he says Kuma Hashem. Kuma Hashem. When the Aron travels, Hashem is traveling. Right? That's the Peshach, by the way. They, they say, Al pi Hashem Yahanu, Al pi Hashem Yisahu, and yet, the, the Aron was going, uh, Aron berit Hashem no se alif nehem. How? Because the Aron would go, and the al pi Hashem, the ana, and that was on top of the Aron. It goes the Aron, and then they had to start traveling. Okay. But, so this is a very thing. It's not like a mistake is so crazy that it has nothing to stand on. The, the, the Navi is granting to us that God is Yoshev HaKirubi, but at the same time pointing out Shanae Bene Leo there. And he even makes sure to spell out the names of these terrible people. So watch what happens. So obviously I'll get so excited. And these used to be some of my favorite Pesukim. Pesuk Vavzain Head used to be some, some of my favorite Pesukim in Hanach. Then they stopped being my favorite pistol came because I'll tell you why. They hear the, the loud noise, the shouting, the excitement from the Jewish camp. So the Philistine will oh, they brought in Aaron Hashem. So what happens? Look what the Philistine say. Not Ba'arun. What did the Pilish team say? These are the words. But Elohim El Hamahane. Notice they're not going to call it Hashem. You came back. Okay, they say, Oh, Elohim came to the Mahane. Oh, now we're in trouble. Woe to us. Woe to us. This, this, they didn't have that on beforehand. Now the Elohim is in Mahane sale. The God is fighting on their side. Who's going to save us from the awesome God? This is the God who smote the Egyptians. He's you tell the Anashim and the Hamtim, and then they say, "Okay, well, we have to fight. Okay, so strengthen yourself, and let's go fight." And by the way, the pasuk is fascinating because it says, "Lest you be slaves, enslaved to the Jews, just like you were, they were enslaved to you." Meaning, implying, and we'll see this later during the time of Shaul. Situation is not just that the Pilashim are angling for more land; they have control over Israel. And the Jewish people, how do they work enslaved to them? They're paying them taxes. We'll see there's more to it as well. But at least over here, they're paying them taxes. They, they're literally subjugated to the Pilishtim. So, right, you read these Pesukim. I remember the first time, I think I was, I don't know, fifth, sixth grade, when you're learning the, these, this Pasuk in school. 
you read these Pesukim and you're like, ah, awesome. Okay, Hashem came and now he's going to come and, and, and now everything is going to, you know, the Jewish people are going to win. And you, you think it really works. As when you're reading it for the first time, you think it's going to work. You got scared, you got excited, right? The morale of the battle completely shifts and you think, okay, right, God came. Okay, so it has to work. 10, 11 years old. Well, if you have the luxury that this is your first time hearing the story, right? It should be obvious to you, right? Okay, yeah, this is good. And instead, we read the Pasuk, Yod, this time, they don't just lose, but they, they completely flee the battlefield. Not 4,000, 30,000, seven and a half times more. Not only that, though, Notice we say the names again. Not just Shnei Ben Eli. We say Hafni Ufin Has. But what, what what happened? The Aaron got captured. How is this possible? What's happening? If God was here, how'd they lose the war? So what, what, what do we have to say? How is this possible? So when you realize what happened here, that this is not really very Jewish, because they're forgetting that they need to improve their actions. And instead, you bring two the Sha'im onto the battlefield to carry God's thing. And they are the people who bozai, who disgrace God. You realize that Judaism is not about relics, it's not about talismans, it's not about uh, holy objects. They don't work automatically. It could even be taken. The Adon could be taken. And not only that, by the way, the way I read it, why 30,000 people die. Yeah, God is actively punishing Amisel, by the way, but that's a separate story, right? 30,000 as opposed to 4,000, there's a Makkah coming. God is causing them to die, it seems to be. That's how angry Hashem is. He's angry at Amisel for bringing him in, for disrespecting him like this. He's not an object. They're, creating, they're treating God as an object. I bring him here, he comes. Now, why did I tell you I hate these Pesukim? Uh, or I used to love them, but now I don't. Because who thinks that God is an object? What, why are the Pilishtim saying this? Because that's how the Abu Dazara think. The Pilishtim worship Abu Dazara. Oh, the Aaron came, so God came, because he, he, the whole, holy object is here, now we're in trouble. And then they capture the holy object. This is how the Abu Dazara think. Judaism, yeah, God is Yeshiva could have been great. And we'll have to talk about what that means, and we'll play that through the tension that's going to be developed later on in Pedake. But fine, God is Yeshiva could have been, but at the end of the day, you lost the war, not because God was, you, you had the Aron, or you didn't have the Aron, you had the holy object of God or not. You lost the war because of your behavior. You can't bring Hofni bin Has to the war. <laughs> There's a beautiful pasuk you have in Sefer Devarim. Says, Ki Hashem el Koecha mit Halech bekerv Mahanecha, Lassi Lecha, Laeteto Evecha Lefanecha. God is in front of you, walking amidst your camp to protect you and to give you give your enemies to you in front of you. So, meaning, God comes how? What's the context of that pasuk? We're talking about a war camp. God is presence of the war camp. What's the context? The context is shocking. It's always embarrassing. It's talking about if a person has to go to the bathroom, make sure to go outside the war camp. You can't make, you can't make inside the war camp because you're disgracing God. God is present. How? How does that manifest itself? Don't go to the bathroom in the camp. Not bringing that at all. Not bringing an object. Your behavior matters. The way you're going to treat. The, the way you're going to treat God and your relationship matters, not these objects. So yeah, they're wonderful pesukim, like it shows that the pilishtim are scared of Hashem, but it's terrible because it's talking about it's the objectifying God. It's of the Abu Dazara, and why is it so terrible? Because you see, the Jews thought the same thing at Pesuk Dalid, and then the Jews say, "Why are we losing the war? We don't have God." And they go on Pesuk Gimel, and they go and they bring God. That's 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 the Abu Dazara mentality. I would go so far as to say, I can't promise you that this is true, but I could strongly suspect the author 
has no idea that the Pilishtim ever said these words. Rather, he puts the words in the mouth of the Pilishtim, how they would respond in order for us to understand, to shed light on the fact that the Pilishtim and Israel are responding the same way. This is a tremendous problem for Am Yisrael's conception of religion. The fact that you think you're worshiping objects. But that's very easy to happen when your leader is a Kohen. So watch this. And now this brings us to the second half of the story, and then I'll explain what I mean when we finish. So he runs all the way back to Shiloh. He goes back on that same day, so you can get the sense of the distance. Umadav Kiruaim is closing a rift, Ba'adamal Rosho, because he's mourning, he has ashes, so he has uh, the dirt on his head. Vayavo to Shiloh. Vihine Ali Yoshev Alakise Ya Derech Misape. Ali is sitting on the chair watching what's happening. Kiayali Boharid Al Aron Ha'ilim. Notice those words. What? Well, Ali's all nervous. So he, Ali is sitting in anticipation from news. So he's sitting in Derech Mitzapeh, right? The scouting, uh, the scout uh, outlook of, of, of Shiloh because he wants to find out the news. What happened? Because we'll come back to this. So he's saying it in the city. He's passing the news in the city. And all the city is in a tumult hearing the news. Aron Elohim got taken. So Eli hears what's happening, so they send the guy to Eli. He goes to Eli to come to tell him the news. Keep in mind, the way the cities were built, probably the city is built on some form of slope, and the highest spot is where Eli is waiting for the is where Ali is waiting for to hear the news, right? This, if he's on the scout album. Okay. So he, Ali, the Navi tells us, Ali ben tishim u'shmona shana, ve'inav kamu, ve'inav kama, lo yachol irod. Ali is 98 years old, he can't see, which we, we knew from earlier. Ve'yomen ha'ish el Ali, anuchi haba mina maracha, because he can't see, okay, I'm the guy who came. And I'm running from the war. What happened? And this is what he says. Number one. The Jews lost the war. Terrible amount of people. We know 30,000 people died. When your children die. And lastly, Baron Elohim Lokaha. The Aron was taken. So there's four pieces of news. Notice the way he broke it to him. First, he gives an introduction of Pasuk Zion. I'm the guy who came from the war. Okay, what, what happened? So he starts off A, they lost the war. B, there was a big, big amount of casualties. C, his sons died. And then finally, D, so what happens is that at the end he falls down, he breaks his neck, he dies. But what does the Pasuk tell us? What, what causes him this shock that caused him to fall out of his chair and, and die from the fall? Okay? Specifically the Aron. The Aron, which he was waiting for to find out the news. He finds out the news of the Aron, and then he dies. Falls off the chair, shock, dies. Okay. Now, watch this. It's not just him. But it's not Eshet Pinchas is giving birth. She hears that the Aaron was taken. 
and that her father-in-law died, Hamiha, Veisha, and her husband, and she gives birth in a bad way, and she's dying, as she's dying, giving birth to the child. But to the Bena and it's about Haleha Alter Iki Ven Yalat, Lo Antav, Lo Shataliba. Very similar to to Rahel, uh, Alter Ii. Don't worry. I should die Ki Ben Yalat. It's a boy. Uh, uh, somebody asked me by Rahel, why does it say that by Rahel? Don't worry, it's a boy. Don't fear, it's a boy. I, I don't think as opposed to a girl. No, you're dying for a girl as opposed to a boy. I don't think that that's what it means. Meaning at least I think that they're trying to tell, don't worry, at least your child is coming out alive. You have a continuity. You didn't You didn't die in vain. That's, that's I think, I think the meaning of the term here, but I can't promise you. But the Krala Na'ad Ichavod. So what is she? She names the baby Ichavod. Lemor Gala Kavod Misael. El Hilakah. Aron ha'Elohim, el Hamia v'Isha, the loss of kavod. Because ich kavod, we lack kavod because we lost Aron and the death of a father-in-law and a husband. But Tomer gala kavod mi Yisrael inokah Aron ha'Elohim. Aron ha'Elohim, and she doubles down and says it again. Right, the kavod has run away from the Jewish people, been exiled from Am Yisrael because. That one was taken. So what, what do I need this for? What do I need all these details? Notice, notice how many details I have from Pasuk 15 to Pasuk 22. A third of the Perik is not talking about the actual war. It's talking about Eli dying and Eshet Pinhas dying as hearing the news. So on one level, uh, yeah, you read the panic, you want to know, is it serious that the Aron was taken? Yeah, it's very serious that Aron was taken. Look, look at their responses. But again, unfortunately, there's something problematic here. If you are the leader of Am Yisrael, right, it tells the Hushafat Yisrael of Ba'im Shana in the end of Pasuk Yudhayim. You are sitting, wanting to, waiting for the news, because why? Because they took that on. What, what about what, what what about the fact that your nation is at war? What about the fact that the human lives on the line? And also your sons? No, no. That one was taken. That's what's bothering him. Who's gonna win the war? Eh, I don't care. I I, I the Aron, what's gonna happen to the Aron? That's what he's worried about. When does he fall off his chair and die? After all the bad news, when they said Aron Elohim, and they knew the guy knew to put it that way, to put it last, to try to break the news, and he knew that would create the strongest response for Eli. Eshet Pinhas Galach Avod Misael Kinokah Aron Elohim. At the end of the day, yes, the husband died, the father-in-law died, but at the end of the day, why did they lose Kavod? Because Aron was taken. Meaning, what are these people doing here? These people are worshiping an object. I, I mean, there's no other way to say it. Where, where did Am Yisrael get this Avodah Zarah mentality from? That the Aron is God? who Because the Kohen is entrenched in that view as well. I, I'm not sure. It's probably more Avodah Zarah seeped into Am Yisrael and then eventually it affected even Eli over generations. I think that's the way it worked. But my point is, this is so entrenched that the leaders of Am Yisrael, this is how they're thinking. This is what they're teaching to the people, what to respect. We have to worry about the object. It's not about our actions. Our actions are not mentioned. Our actions are not accounted for, but the object is sacred. This makes a lot of sense when you have a Kohen as the leader of Am Yisrael. And now we can really understand God. If you're God, I need to break this. That one could be taken. Yeah, that one could be taken. Take that on. I need Eli Hofni Pinhas to die. I need who to come and charge. I need a Navi. Why is a Navi so important here? Because the Navi's way of communication is, is not through an object. There's no object involved in the communication between the Navi and God. It's a relationship between man and God. It's the opposite of Hana. Hana prays to Hashem. Hashem talks to Shemuel. There's relationship factor. 
There's one family has this idea of the God relationship, Hanan Shemuel, the mother and the son. And we said he maybe even the father, Elkanah, might have been an Avi as well. They understand it, they get it. There's a relationship involved. And these are people who love the Mikdash. They're coming every year to the Mikdash. Don't get me wrong. And, and by the way, don't get me wrong. We're going to speak about this next week. The Aaron is called to Sheva Kiruvim. Hashem, Aaron, Brit Hashem, Yo Sheva Kiruvim. And that Aaron is sacred. And, and it's important. And treating objects with the proper holiness and Kiddusha is essential within Judaism. And if you try to answer where the Aaron is, you could die. We have, we're very, these are very important things. But at the end of the day, Judaism is not about objects. We have objects. They're part of Judaism. We can't, we're not taking that away. But that's not what Judaism is about. That's, a, that's an extension of Judaism that, that exists within Judaism, but it's not the core of Judaism. Right? Imagine these are people would never be able to be Jewish today. I mean, imagine, we lived with that, Aron Elohim, already from the second Beit HaMikdash, before the end of the destruction of the first Beit HaMikdash, throughout the second temple period, and you haven't had the Aron for over 2,500 years. And we've had Judaism. We've not had the Aron for longer than we've had the Aron, right? If you want to think about it that way. Almost three times as long, we've lived without the Aron. And, and we could do it. We don't need an object within Judaism. We need our relationship with God to the point where when you stop worshiping the object, God is going to come into play. There's a famous idea we talk about in the second Beit HaMikdash. Why was the second Beit HaMikdash destroyed? Because they didn't say the Barakha and the Torah first. What does that mean? The Torah became an object. So in the second Beit HaMikdash, they didn't have that on. They had the Torah. Okay, I'll destroy the Beit HaMikdash. I'll make you realize it's about the relationship and the Torah is just a vehicle to get you to the relationship, but it has to end up with God. It has to end up with accountability for actions. It has to end up with accountability for behavior. You can't be bringing these Chofni and Pinhas fellows to be carrying around the banner of God. It doesn't work like that. You don't carry me. That's what God is. That's the message God is saying. You absolutely do not carry me. I'm not an object and I'm only be, I'll only dwell amongst people whom I choose. And therefore, I choose Shemuel, I choose the Navi, as opposed to the leadership of the Kehuna. That's this pedic. It's a very essential pedic. What's going to happen is that we're going to be, we take a break from Shemuel and talk about the Aron and Pedic Hay. And then we'll get back to the Aron and Pedic Hay and Pedic Bab, which hopefully we'll try to do together. And then we'll get back to Shemuel and Pedic Zion. Okay, so that's what's going to happen. But already, Pedic Dalit is so key because it breaks the notion of the object and it's freeing us about this idea to enable Shemuel to now grow into a leader in a full way. But that's going to take a detour, though. That's really the big theme of where we need to go. But we'll take a detour and actually see, okay, what happens to that one, right? That's the big question. Where is it going to go? So we'll see that happening next week in Pedic Dalid and Pedic K will try to do them together. Okay, very good. Get away.